Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome everybody. If you've read the title of the video, you'll know this is um, a bit, I've added to my range of my SCH chisels, which I said I was gonna do. I was gonna have the SCH um, five, and six. five and six. I was gonna have the six mil cutter and the eight mil cutter fitted on an SCH where I've got them on a hollower. I've also done them with a 12 mil, so I've got four new chisels to that range, okay? So I thought I'd just show you the actual SCH, because not a lot of people know what they are. Um, and I get questions asked all the time. So just a brief to go through what there is of them. The start off, the original, the first one that I had as for sale was the SCH1. I call it the one because it was the first chisel, the SCH1. Uh, SCH stands for Shear Cut Hollower, okay? AU Cutter, that's what I call my cutters, okay? You won't find it if you look for it under other names. It's, I call my cutters the AU, okay? Right, SCH1, 14 inch handle, six inch bar, 10 mil AU cutter, a cut cutter, okay? Which is fitted to the bar at, four, so that way isn't, if the bar's flat, it's fitted at 45 degrees, okay? The correct angle for shear cutting, okay? Either side, whether you want to pull or push, okay? So that's the SCH one. Then I came up with, I've got the SCH two. Now that's exactly the same cutter, 14 inch handle. You've got a nine inch 12 mil bar. So this one I would use for bowls, little bowls like this sort of size, okay? If you're going in two up to three inches deep, because remember if you've, if you've got a tool rest, my tool rest is like an inch thick. So I've got the tool rest, Plus, if I'm going three inches in, so I've got over half of my bar down there. So, you know, that, I think around three inch deep, unless you can get your tool rest in and you can go inside the bowl, then that's different. You can obviously go as deep as you want. But if you're overhanging, I'd say a maximum of three inches. So this one will go obviously a lot deeper. I'd go up to four, four or five inches with this one quite happily. Um, that's the SCH2. And then from that, I got the SCH3, which has the 12 mil nine inch bar, 14 inch handle, and has the 12 mil AU cutter. This one I use more, I always say, as a finishing tool. It is the best finishing tool there is. If you want to get that finished cut on the bottom of a bowl, there's just absolutely no tool that can touch it. It is fantastic for leaving that clean finish. It's my finished tool, that's what it is. I don't have a bottom feed bowl gouge. This is it for me. That's the SCH3. So the SCH4, that's a different fit. That, that as guys, you'll know if you see, that's this one that has the hooked, okay. That's got the cutter fitted at the correct angle. That's for hollow forms and undercutting. That's uh, for another video. I've got a video out for that. So I'm not actually showing that and including that in this section. This is just for these ones. Um, right, so after that, the SCH4 would come the SCH five which is one of the new ones now now this is the six inch uh 10 mil bar 14 inch and they all all my tools have the standard tools have the 14 inch handle okay solid beach handle and this has the eight mil au cutter okay again fitted at the 45 so i'll explain about the the, the use of the tool in a minute right i'm just saying what ones i've got then the six the sch6 that has the little six mil cut. Oh. I love this. This is absolutely fantastic, this. Um, and that has that six mil cutter, okay? And again, fitted and all ground, so it works perfectly when you get it. There's no need to do anything. It works straight out of the box. Well, it's not cut, it's come in a box. Don't think you're gonna get in a box. It don't come in a box. If it's a single chisel, it'd be in a tube, okay? Right, then from that, where am I? A six, I've got SCH seven <laughs> now, I've added a seven. That is the eight mil cutter on a 12 mil nine inch bar. And there you go, you can see that's got the eight mil cutter, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? Right, and as I said, all it's all chamfer, all, all uh, ground, so it all works perfectly. And then from that, the final one, for now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say, watch it's your space. Um, 12 mil bar. <laughs> nine inches long and that's got the six mil au cutter on it i haven't even tried this yet i don't i uh, it's i haven't even tried it myself i think it's going to be lovely 
But there you go. So that's the SCH range. Okay. Now I've always said with the SCH chisels, they're the closest thing you will ever get to a carbide bowl gouge. Okay. That's my opinion. And that's how I sell them as they, they are basically a carbide bowl gouge. Anything you'll do with a bowl gouge, you can do with one of these. Okay. But the beauty of these is you, they are, if you use them, how I will show you how to use them, they are totally catch proof. You will not get a catch, okay? Um, and you will get lovely clean finishes and clean cuts. You can push cut, you can pull cut. You can shear cut coming out of a bowl, which you cannot do with a bowl gouge. You can do it with one of these. Right, okay, so just a quick go on this. I'm gonna start the lathe up. I've not got my face mask on. I know someone commented the other day about when I was demoing uh, the sharpening of the cutters, I didn't wear a face shield because I'm I'm not actually turning anything. I'm not doing, I'm not gonna get a catch. I know I'm not gonna get a catch. I'm not going to get loads of dust. I'm just going to show you a couple of cuts on how these are used, okay? So, straightforward. If you use it, they're not like your, the rest of your carbide, okay? Where a lot of people think use it flat and just push in. No, with these, you've got to get onto the where the, the cut is going to work. So, for this, it's just... There. If you want to pull cut, that is it. Now, as you see, there is no grabbing. There's no catching. There's nothing... I haven't got to try, I mean, don't try and come in like this, like a bowl gouge and do all this. It won't, you won't get a cut, okay? It's, the bevel on this, now, they'd probably say, you'd probably say it's like 95, it's actually like five degree chamfer on that, okay? Five to 10 degree, that's all it is. So, you you must, when you're coming in for a cut, you must, have your hand when you're on the side of a bowl your handle must be right over this side so if you've got your lathe up against the wall you ain't gonna do it okay right and all you do is follow around if you want to pull cut if you are up against, but then up against the wall you've got to finish with your handle over there so again you need room you just come here and you just bring it just take, push the handle away from you that's all you got to do push the handle away okay and that is it for going in just bring the handle towards you just let it pivot on there okay don't do any of it. you don't have to hold it there's no grabbing there's no nothing the sch2 exactly the same it's just got the bigger bar a bit more substantial tool okay it works exactly the same and that's the beauty of these is they all work exactly the same. So if you like doing your hollowing and you want to use the carbide with these, your muscle memory will be the same with all the tools. There's no difference when you pick up each tool. There is no difference. And we can just, and I'm just taking shallow, I'm not, I don't want to get this hollowed in two seconds. I've got <laughs> another four chisels to show you yet. Right, so. That's, that's gone up to the SCH3, that's got the 12mm cut up. So now we're going to come in with the 8mm here, okay? The little 8mm, and it's going to be exactly the same. Now, the difference in the cutters, well, it depends on what you're, you're doing. Get that right, there you go. It depends on what you're, what you're doing for what size cutter you want. For me, have them all you know it's you basically with this i've always said this is like having a three eighths bowl gouge okay and this is like having a half inch the stability of a half inch bowl gouge because your cutting area would be the same anyway okay if you actually look at the tip of your five eighths or your three eighths your actual cutting area that actually cuts the wood is roughly around the same so that would be like your five eighths, but you've got the benefit you haven't got a flu. So you'll get less vibration because you've got a solid, solid bar through. This one, like I said, I tend to say this is more like a bottom feed for, for getting that clean up, but it will hog wood out, it's not a problem, okay? Your eight mil, again, is like more of a, a detailed um, three eighths, if you like more like a, a pointy grind to it it's a little bit less so it's going to take less of a bite than the 10 mil sometimes you need to take a less of a bite the six mil well that well 
<laughs> I don't know what to say about a six mil. Um, he's just like, that six mil is just so hungry for wood. <laughs> You know, it just wants to eat wood. That's all it wants to do. You can come across the front if you want to clean up the front. Little bit of vibrate. That's just, that's just where it's got to get the front level. That's all. That's just vibrating a little bit there. There you go. Good job. Now, beautiful clean finish. We'll see the finish in a minute. So you can cut, but just, you've got the bevel. So you can get on the bevel there. Just move your handle. You'll see. If you push it there, there's no cutting. We move it, you'll see it just starts to produce a bit of dust. Okay? And then just let it do its job. Just let it do its job. The six mil will just remove that wood. Okay? Then we come up, as I said, we've got the the next one up now. Again, if you've got deeper bowls. So if you want to get right down in the bottom, then these are perfect for it. Okay? Now I I suggest these more for bowls than I do for... Sorry, just make that cut. Than I do for pots and boxes and things. You can use it to come up if you can get round, but you always really want to be on that tip. You don't want to be scraping it. You don't want to be doing this on the side here. All right? It will cut, you can see. Look, you don't... That, look, it's not moving much wood. You don't want to be using it like that. Don't use it on the side like that, okay? You want to be on the tip. If you come on the tip, then you will remove that wood. Again, that's the eight mil, okay? And you will remove that wood fast. You don't want to be doing this, okay? That is not the way to use these tools. You must work off the tip. That's what I don't say for, for doing the side of pot boxes or things that you're better with the standard the flat cutters you really are and then the next one's the six mil on the 12 mil bar i haven't even tried this yet I, that's the first time i've tried that um eight mil one so this is on the oh well, there you go now i have said before a lot of times when you cut it's good to go if you get the cut, it's good, it can be good to go up. So you come up and then like raise the handle and come down to the center. A lot of that it depends on the wood you're cutting. Some woods need that, some woods you can go straight in. Right, now we've just taken that part of that. Let's have a look what sort of finish we get. And that's off that little six mil cutter, okay? The one that tends to be a bit aggressive and people <laughs> think, but look at that finish, look. You'd actually think I've polished that. Look, that's the finish off of these chisels. And I'm not really... Now, even when you get down to this sort of stage, I would start, if you can, just put your tool rest at that side angle. It's not because of overhang. It's because it helps you to get this angle better. You must be working off that tip. You can't work off the tip here and go in like you would with a bowl gouge, okay? You must have the handle that way. That's how these are designed to work. That's how I designed them to work. And like I said, they are totally catch free. I'm not saying you can't get that little skip back if you come in here and you might get that little skip. Skip back's not a catch, but you will not get a sort of a catch where you'll throw your bowl off, okay? That doesn't happen. This just gives you that bar's kept flat flat on the rest okay with this one you don't roll it at all it's already set flat if you're pushing the cutters on that side if you're pulling the cutters obviously on this side okay and all we do is we come in here now we can take aggressive cuts if we want like this i'm not trying to i'm not trying to take an aggressive cut i'm just demonstrating so i'm taking lighter cuts and this is this is black walnut and very dry. This is one of the ones I've got the boot for. This is probably about 20 years old, this piece of wood, mm -hmm. at least. Oh, I think that, innit? I think that. Yeah. It's very dry. 
it's, it's very dry, but you can see we are actually getting shavings, although they're very dry shavings. Yeah. This wood is really dry. Right, and again, if you want to do it as a pull cut, we can come there and we can pull and come out. Again, keep the tool in the same place and just pivot. That's all you have to do is pivot. You don't have to pull or drag. Just come in with it here. That's where it's going to start to cut. And we just pivot. And we can pull cut straight out of the bowl. And that'll probably be a fairly decent finish as well. Right, we've got a little bit of tear there. We will because we're pulling and this grain, the way this grain's going, it doesn't want to be pulled, it wants to be push cut, okay? But that actually isn't a bad finish anyway, considering I'm just pulling out on that. But the, the one that would give, I always say is the best for finish cutting is the 12 mil, the SCH3. That is the chisel for finish cuts, okay? greedy at it towards that end there <laughs> but we can just if you're going to come back to pick up the cut just let the bevel come back and then it will find the piece that's that's off of its doodah bit <laughs> <laughs> that you didn't get okay and there you go I, I sort of messed that up a little bit because I, I went a bit greedy but absolutely super smooth no no all that torn grain look it's all gone it's all gone there okay so basically, that is it guys, that is the, the range. Can you use them on the outside of bowls? Yes you can. Do I? No I don't, okay. Um, it's not, it's it, it, sheer cut hollower. It is really for hollowing. That's what they're for. And, and that's the range. Now, like I said, if you struggle with a bowl gouge, then give one a try. You're, you'll find you're, you're just hollow. And, that, and the thing is with this, there's no sharpening. You haven't got to worry about sharpening it. When you get it, you haven't got to worry about putting a grind on the end of it. It comes with the grind that is for that chisel. It will be all shaped like this, okay? So it's come ready to use. And it will be razor sharp, ready to use, and you ain't got to worry about sharpening or anything. So that all goes away. Cost, right. I've I'm changed it on a couple. Um, they're gonna be across the board the same price, 36 pound. That's what they are. For whatever one you buy, it's 36 pound and that's with free UK post, which is first class sign for, okay? And that's what they'll be doing. They're gonna be changing on the website. They're gonna be on one page and there's gonna be a drop down box for which one you want to choose, whether you want the one, two, three. So just, there'll be a little bit there showing you each chisel. So make sure you actually get the right one that you want. And that's how it's going to be on the website. So I'm going to have to redo some bits on the website and they're going to be there. But £36 and that's it. And you've got a carbide bowl gouge, basically. And you've seen, you've seen what they can do. And this is very dry, a very dry old piece of black walnut. Look, I mean, that is, you can see how dry that is. <laughs> okay. But it will still produce shavings. Got a bit of dust, but it's a lot of, producing a lot of these Hang on, they've all gone down that bit there, look. Producing these shavings like this, which is pretty good. So there you go. Right, that's it, guys. That's all I wanted to do and show you. So that is the upgrade. I said to say, so I've got four more in the range. The six. I've got the five, sorry, the five. Keep forgetting this little one, poor sod. The five, <laughs> okay, with the eight mil cutter. The six with the six mil cutter. And the seven and the eight, which are the same, but on 12 mil bars. Okay. And that's the range, guys. And it's going to have the full description. Of full each description one. will yeah. be on the web page. I'm going to be sorting out the web page right now. So I'll see you on the next one now, guys. Toodle pip. Bye, guys.